We are now Synergy Radio, powerful talk that inspires change. show where we serve you your most important meal of the day (laughs) yes happy new year happy new year (laughs) we are serving (laughs) success see we're starting already y'all we are serving success strategies and side dishes each saturday here on synergy radio now you have to forgive us ladies and gentlemen who are listening right now it's our first episode back in the new year we're dusting ourselves off a little bit after having come back from a two-week hiatus how was your break joy it was wonderful i missed you i missed our listeners and viewers and we are so glad to be back in the studio we're excited to kick off 2018 with a bang Yes, we are, and I am excited that we're here, too. I haven't seen you since last year. You're looking good. Thank you, too, girl. (laughs) Got that glow. (laughs) Yes, you got that glow. So how about we do this? Grab your coffee and your croissant, and let's get down to business. We're your Business Breakfast talk show hosts. I am Tiffany A. Washington. And I am Joy M. Hutton. All right, and today's show is all about goal setting. It's the top of the year, and if you don't have clarity on your goals, we're going to help you to get some today. All right, get your whole goal life. Get your whole goal life. So in studio, we have Mr. John Niklos. Did I say that right? Yes. Okay, (laughs) CEO of Lead 360. He's in studio with us today, but he'll be coming on air with us during our second segment. He's a solution expert who helps startups and small businesses implement their plan for success. Today, he's going to tell us how to get our goals in order. So, I'm excited about that. Yes, absolutely. So, let's get right to it. Yes. So, how should we approach our goals, Joy? What are some things that we need to think about when it's time for us to start setting our goals? Now, realistically, you know, (coughs) we should have already started. Absolutely. Right? That should have happened in... 2017. December. Yes. 2017. At the latest. Yes. However, for those who are trying to catch up, what, right. what's one of the first things that needs to happen? You know, I think one of the words that we will hear a lot today is mm-hmm. planning. Yes. And we talk about planning all the time on our show, but I think we're going to hear a lot of uh, uh, that word a lot today. So we're not being redundant, guys. It's just something that is really important when you think about setting goals for yourself. Absolutely. And you don't have to wait until January 1st. To right. do it. Exactly. People are like, you know, I'm going to wait until the new year to set my new year's resolutions and goals and all that stuff. Right. You don't have to wait until January 1st. Absolutely. Every day is a new day mm-hmm. that you can press that reset button. Absolutely. So I think first, you know, when setting goals, you want to set goals that actually motivate you. Right. I mean, I'm not going to set a goal that doesn't motivate me, right? Exactly. <laughs> Yeah, and so talk a little bit more about that because a lot of us, sometimes we set goals because we feel like there is a need to set this goal mm-hmm. or maybe to keep up with the Joneses, I'm going to set this right. goal. Or I see everybody else doing that in their business, so maybe I should do it too. But it's not your goal if, he, if you're doing it for somebody else. You, yeah, so like talk to us about that. What are What is some of the percentages that are out there? So they say that 93% of people can translate goals or can't translate goals into actions if the goals are irrelevant to them. Yeah, I, I would definitely Did we agree hear that? with that. Irrelevant. If it's relevant. irrelevant. Mm-hmm. But it's true. If it's not important to you or if it's not relevant to what you're doing, then you're not going to reach that goal. Absolutely. And, I mean, if it's not adding value to your business, it's not adding value to your life, then why even set that? Why, why set yourself up for failure? Right. So we want to make sure that we're engaging in things that matter to our business and matter to our personal lives. Absolutely. And the next thing that I would offer is to 
set smarter goals. Now, we've already heard about setting smart goals. We hear it all of the time. However, there is a man that I follow. He's, he's an expert in this field, and his name is Michael Hyatt. And he has set up this framework called Smarter <laughs> Goals. Mm. So now, these acronyms just have a couple of extras added to the end. And this is what it stands for. Specific, measurable, action-oriented, mm. risky, time-bound, exciting, and relevant. Mm. Okay? So let's talk about Break each those of those. Down, yeah, yes. let's talk about those a little bit. Specific. Mm -hmm. Specificity is, that's that's the main thing you need to have when you're getting ready to start your goals. It Absolutely. can't just be, I want to make $50,000. Mm -hmm. That's specific, but it's not specific that enough. I want to make $50,000 in my online revenue stream. Yes. That's a little bit more specific, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. Because where where is that money going to be concentrated? Absolutely. So you have to take it a step further. And then measurable. How are you going to know that you've been successful in this area of your goal? Mm -hmm. When you talk when you're talking about measurements, it's like, okay, did it grow by 20%? Right. Did it grow by 50% or was I negative? So, Absolutely. you know, you have to think about those things when you're measuring. Mm -hmm. uh, are you going to scale back or are you going to move forward? That's a goal as right. well when you want to when you want to scale back on things. But whatever it is, it has to be measurable. I have to be able to quantify it. Exactly. Yes. And then action oriented. Say that. Yes. So <laughs> for a lot of <laughs> entrepreneurs out there, they're entrepreneurs in their mind and in their spirit, mm -mm. but not <laughs> externally. <laughs> right. <laughs> So, yes. You know, Joy, you, let's that be real. True. You know, we always very real. Yes. So, yes, just put it out there. There's a lot of people out, out here who are claiming to be entrepreneurs, but they are not doing anything. Yes. And there is nothing in the background to show right. for that. So, what you want to do when you're action oriented, that means mm -hmm. that you not only have a goal on paper, but you are actively working towards whatever it is that you are trying to accomplish. Absolutely. Okay? And then risky. Risky is one of the pieces that you may not have heard before, mm -hmm. but the risky part just means that it should make you uncomfortable. Right. It should be just beyond your comfort zone. The, your goal should be something that you say, oh, I'm a little scared of that. Yeah. You know, it should make you wiggle around a little bit in your seat and say, okay, <laughs> let me get ready for this. Let me brace myself. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> when you're thinking about uh, risky, mm -hmm. that's what you want to, that's what you want to feel. It should be slightly uncomfortable. It shouldn't be so uncomfortable that it's unattainable right but it should be just enough to stretch you mm -hmm. and then also time bound when you're time bound that just means that you have a date and a time by which you are going to accomplish that particular right. goal so all of your goals will not take you to december 2017 right for example if i want to launch an online course mm -hmm. I don't have to wait until December to launch that course, exactly. but I need to make sure that all of the tasks that have to do with my goal line up to get me completed by maybe June. Right. Because I know that the type of course that I want to launch, it's best done in June and December yes. because of the type of content <laughs> that exactly. I want to, exactly. to, you know. So you have a plan. Exactly. You have the idea, but you also have to implement it and execute it. Thank you. Yes. Exactly. So, and it also needs to be exciting, Joy. Yes. It needs to knock your socks off. So when <laughs> you are thinking about your goals, what are some things that are really going to bring a smile to your face? Because not everything in business is easy and not everything in business is fun. Right. But you also want to remember that you need to be excited about it. Like, when I complete this, man, business is going to take off in this particular area. I'm going to gain some new clients over mm -hmm. here. So you want to be excited about what it is that you're putting on paper. And right. finally, you want it to be relevant. We talked about irrelevancy earlier. Yes. But you <laughs> want it to be relevant. So that means you want to align your goals with the direction you want your life and career to take. So mm -hmm. balancing the alignment between long-term and short-term will give you the focus that you need. Ooh, love it. Can you all tell she's passionate about this topic? <laughs> I love goal setting. <laughs> Very passionate, but I appreciate it. And it's so important, though. It is so important. Mm -hmm. So... 
keeping uh, this in mind, uh, Tiffany, how, how do you plan your annual goals? Okay, so just a tidbit, a little bit of behind the curtains. One of the things that I like to do is write on big butcher paper. Mm-hmm. And Joy, you and I have experienced yes. this before. <laughs> because, yes. of course, we set goals for the Business Breakfast Talk Show as well. Right. So we got together and we did that woo, in November. Yes, <laughs> exactly. We were like, we have yeah, to do Yeah, we have this. to do this. <laughs> so we started uh, planning for our new year in November. Yeah. But one of the things that I like to do is write them down on a small sheet of paper. Think about, first of all, go back and assess what happened last year. Mm -hmm. What What, worked, what what worked, what didn't work. How much money did I make? How much did I miss my mark by? Or how much did I exceed my Mm -hmm. mark by? And how do I set new goals based on what happened last year? What are some things that I absolutely hated about last year as far as my business was Mm -hmm. concerned? And how am I going to tweak those things to make sure it's more enjoyable this year? So that's kind of the way I start Mm -hmm. to think about what goals I'm going to set for the new year. Absolutely. Yeah. What about you? I think for me, I'm always thinking about how I can make my business more scalable. Yeah. Because the goal for me is to have my money work for me and, <laughs> and me not working <laughs> for my money. Amen. Okay. Yes. You know, and there are ways to do what you love efficiently and profitably. You right. know, and so I think th- that's something I'm always thinking about, like how can my business evolve to be more scalable? Yes. And looking at, okay, like you said, what worked, what didn't work, what is it that I don't want to do anymore, mm-hmm. and what is it that I really like to do, and how can I further cultivate that in my right. business? Yeah, because in your business, sometimes people end up feeling trapped in their business yes, because they're absolutely. doing so much of what they don't want to mm-hmm. do. And so if you feel like that, one of your goals may need to be to get some people in your camp that right. can do the things that you don't right. like to do. Yes, absolutely. Well, it's already 712, which I means know. it's time to take a break, right? Yes, it is. <laughs> and if you'd like to chime in on how you set your goals, please give us a call at 832-230-5592 or send us a comment in the Facebook live feed and uh, like our page, Business Breakfast Talk Show. Start 2018 with all the social media tools, motivational mojo, and selling techniques you need. We've gathered a toolkit of the top speakers, including Les Brown, live from London, Armando Montalongo, star of Flip This House, Oscar Hines, Arthur and Marketing Ninja, Paul Getter, social media star, Scott Schilling, stock investment expert, and Eric Stoller, founder of the Les Brown Institute. Learn winning strategies from real estate mogul Armando Montalongo a step-by-step process on how to invest, flip, and profit from real estate. Discover how to become a professional speaker. Increase sales by mastering the art of influencing people. Learn the insider secrets on how to make your social media convert into more than just likes. Kick off 2018 like a champion. This powerful seminar will be in Dallas and Houston January 13th and 14th. Tickets available on Eventbrite at 2018 Success Toolkit Event. Dallas, January 13th, and Houston, January 14th. Don't miss it.
tuning in to the Business Breakfast Talk Show, your most important meal of the day. Now, we want you to call in with any questions that you might have. Call us at 832-230-5592. If you have questions about goal setting or if you just need a little bit of direction, go ahead and chime in with us. We're also paying attention on Facebook. Yes. So if you have any comments or questions you want to leave there, we are actively monitoring our Facebook page this morning. And yes. we're making sure that we see you all. So give, uh, who, who do we have with us today, Joy? We have Shanita, Thesha, Kadian, Hey Morris, Malcolm, Latasha, Kedrick, William, and did I miss anybody? Oh, I think we, uh, I don't Benson. Think so. We okay, have our yeah. early risers with us this morning, and Happy New Year to everyone. In the spirit of the new year, we are talking about goal setting. Yes, in the spirit of the new year. Yes. So what did we leave off talking about, Joy? We were talking about the things that uh, we do right. in our businesses to, to set goals. And so you were going to pick up on okay. the planning. On the planning. All right, so let's jump right into this, guys. So the best way to start breaking down your annual goals is, one, to get something to write in mm -hmm. that is going to be dedicated to your business on yes. a regular and consistent basis. Yes. So if that's a journal or if that's a planner, whatever it is that makes you feel comfortable, I get a new journal <laughs> or planner every year. But this year in particular, for those of you who are watching on Facebook, I've gotten a new planner. Me too. Yay! <laughs> so great minds think alike. Yes. My planner is called the Full Focus Planner. And with the Full Focus Planner, there are several sections in here that help you to stay aligned with your goals, but there are so many layers to how you keep yourself centered mm. while trying to accomplish your goals. So I want to go through some of this. Is that okay, Joy? Yeah, absolutely. All right, so on the very first page of your new journal, you should have all of your goals written. And then you want to take a snapshot of it. You want to put it on your phone. Mm -hmm. And you want to post it in your office. You want to have it on a small sheet next to your laptop or your desktop. Those are some of the things you want to do. Make, it, make them visible all of the time. And then you want to decide which goals are in which quarter. Right. right. So what goals do I want to accomplish in quarter one, two, three, four? Mm -hmm. And some of them may take the whole year, but there are certain ones that you're going to specifically focus on during the first quarter. Right. And we're in the first quarter right now. And there is something called achievement goals. Mm. Now, achievement goals are things that are like one offs. Things that you know you need to accomplish, but I only need to do one thing in order to accomplish them. Or after I accomplish them, it's done. It's not mm -hmm. something that's ongoing. Right. So, for example, I have a conference that I want to attend. But at that conference, I need to make X amount of connections because those connections are going to lead to clients, right? right? Yes, exactly. <laughs> right. Which so, leads to money. Which leads to money. <laughs> So I have a goal to yes. make it to this conference because I haven't been there before. It's not here in Houston, so right. I have to plan for that. Exactly. So I know that I'm going to this midwinter conference, and I have an expectation when I go there, and mm -hmm. I have a plan when I go there, right? Right. So that's an achievement goal. So those are those short little things. It's like, okay, I got to do this, and it's going to take me three days to get it done. Right. And yeah. And one thing I wanted to say too, Tiffany, because you're talking about a planner, and that's a visual aid for you. I think it's really important for me as a visual person, and a lot of people think like that as well. If I see it in front of me, yes. I'm going to make it happen. You know, people do vision boards and things like that, and mm -hmm. you can have a vision board on your phone, you can have one on your wall, whatever works for you. But I think putting it into writing is yeah, like, okay, yeah. I have to do it. Right. At exactly. least for me, that holds me accountable. Yeah. So the thing about it is some of us don't hold ourselves accountable. Right. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> Even if it is written, it's like, eh, I'm, I'm not going to do that today. Never mind. <laughs> That's not going to happen. <laughs> right. <laughs> but no, you're so right yeah. about that. Uh, accountability to yourself first mm -hmm. and foremost. Because your life is not going to change unless you actively change it. Exactly. Right? Exactly. So that's the achievement goal that we were talking about. Mm -hmm. One of the things I think we mentioned earlier, too, is like, what is your motivation behind those goals? Mm -hmm. You know, there has to be something that happens as a result of those goals that you want to happen. Okay. And so for that particular goal of going to the conference, um, there I wanted to, one, create a name for myself mm -hmm. in this arena also turn those relationships into lasting relationships yes. and then turn those relationships into money like great said. goals yeah yes. so we have a question or comment yes online? uh lolita wanted to know where can we get that journal oh okay <laughs> 
So I wish it were my journal, but it's not. <laughs> I did not create it. The journal is by Michael Hyatt, and his last name is spelled H-Y-A-T-T. So you can go to fullfocusplanner.com and order yours. They come by quarters. So you can either order, excuse me, either order a full set of four, because this is just one quarter. This thick this right here <laughs> is just one quarter's wow. worth of information. That's and so lot. you end up with four of these journals if you want to invest in four, or you can do it by the quarter. Mm -hmm. And it comes in this nice little soft box once you get it. It's really it's really nice to receive it yes. in the in the mail. So that's yeah. where you can get it. Full fo fullfocusplanner.com. All right. So, moving on in this full focus planner. <laughs> You also want to have a habit goal. Yes. Now, so what are some of the good habits that you want to create for yourself? Mm. What are some of the things that you didn't do last year that you know if you implemented them, it would make your day go a little bit smoother or it would make you feel a little bit better about what you are doing? Mm -hmm. And so your habit goals means like a morning routine or a ritual that you want to incorporate. And so do you have any of those, Joy? I Any definitely habits? do have rituals. Uh -huh. I like to say I have more good habits than bad. Right. Okay. Well, that's <laughs> but I a good do thing. have some some rituals or or regimen. I'm a very regimented person, so mm -hmm. there are some things that I definitely do every day. Yeah. So, what is one thing that you know you have to do every day? I have to read something motivational. Hmm. Okay, I, that's I, good. You know, some type of mantra, something motivational that inspires me because, you know, you have your good days and bad days in entre as an entrepreneur. Right. Um, so just keeping myself motivated and reminding myself of why I'm in business. Oh, that's good. Mm -hmm. Reminding yourself of the why. Yes. That's such a big word because mm -hmm. sometimes we get so bogged down in mm -hmm. things. And we forget why we're doing what we're doing. Absolutely. So you have to return back to that. Mm -hmm. So with your habit goals, you just want to make sure <coughs> that you put a frequency around it. And it, it may be to get up and pray every morning. And that's yeah. to be a part of your morning routine. Mm -hmm. And you talk about how many days you're going to do it, what time you're going to do that particular yes. habit, and how long you're going to do it before you feel like it becomes a habit. Right. So research shows that you have to do something consistently for 60 times in order for it to really become a habit, something that you're just mm. automatically doing on a regular basis. And so there's a streak targeter in here that makes you check off every day that you do it. Mm. So that's one of the things that I like about that the habit goal right yeah and so we also have as we move through here you can hear me turning all of the pages I'm not gonna go through every single piece of this because there's a lot to set up but once you get it set up you feel good yeah. about yourself you know you have a court your your quarters at a glance what's gonna happen over the course of this first quarter mm -hmm. in your year but the next important thing is your ideal week Ooh. What does your ideal week look like? That doesn't mean that you're going to have this perfect week every week, mm -hmm. but you need to have something written that says, okay, these things need to happen on Mondays, these things need to be happening on Tuesdays, right. and setting so on deadlines. and so forth, and setting deadlines, That's right? That's important. Yeah. Because you can put a goal out there <clears throat> without a target deadline, and you just keep pushing it off. You right. Know? If I don't say, listen, I need this done by January 31st, then it doesn't become a priority for me. Right. So I think that helps you prioritize your goals and really map out how you're going to schedule those goals during the year. Right. And, you know, Michael Hyatt also talks about things that you're going to do that are going to be front stage, mm -hmm. backstage, and off stage. Right. Front absolutely. stage means I need to be doing a Facebook Live every Monday night at 7 p.m. Exactly. You know, backstage means I'm creating content every mm -hmm. Sunday from 3 p.m. to 8 p.m. Right. And off stage means I'm at a, I'm I'm not doing anything or either I have meetings that don't necessarily relate right. to uh, what I need to do front stage or backstage. Hmm. So you okay. need to make sure that you calculate all of that time yeah. into your schedule because you do need some off stage time right. as well for yourself. So I just kind of gave you an outline of what some of my days look like. On Sundays yeah. is content <laughs> creation. <Right. laughs> uh, clearly on Saturdays is the show right. that we do. I have a day that I have just for errands. And so that's like my off stage mm -hmm. day. Like mm -hmm. I need to take care of me type of day. Exactly. <laughs> you know, and exactly. uh, when, I, when I'm going to show up on social media and how right. I'm going to be consistent on those days. So you want to remember that when you're setting your goals mm -hmm. as well. Absolutely. Yeah. So daily rituals. Mm -hmm. You said you had systems and routines. 
Now, part of that, what is, what is your morning routine typically look like? So, four out of three, well, let me say three. Okay. <laughs> four is always <laughs> ambitious. Yes. Three to four days I work out in the morning. I like to get my workouts uh, done in the morning because that just gets the, the juices flowing. Right. gets the energy going for me. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm not an early morning person. I'm mm -hmm. working on that in 2018, <laughs> you know. Right. A work in progress, yes. but I cannot. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, I have a dog, you know, so we, you know, I have to make sure she's good and then I get my, my routine going. Um, but working out for me is really important. Praying is important to me. Mm -hmm. And, you know, really, I, I'm, I'm a taskless person. Uh -huh. So I have my task. I have my, my deadline set because, like I said, if I do not have a deadline set, it's not happening. Right. Or it's not happening immediately, mm -hmm. at least. And so I will procrastinate until, you know, the second coming. So yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I have to that. set those deadlines for myself. So, you know, um, working out, you know, getting that energy right, getting centered, and, um, you know, whatever I have for that day. You know, I try not to do meetings every day of the week because mm -hmm. I pick two days that I meet with clients because, you know, you want to just have time in your office or wherever you're working to focus on the work instead right. of being out and meeting clients and interrupting the flow of your day. Absolutely. So I really try not to do that. Yeah, um, I like that. Yeah. And working out. Yes. <laughs> And then I have friend time on. built in there, yes. you know, social time built in there because you have to have that. That's important to yes. keep that balance. Absolutely. You know, because you have to keep yourself from going crazy. Yes, exactly. So in my morning ritual, one of the things that I also like to do is professional development. Mm -hmm. So if it's anything Absolutely. that I can jump on and listen to very quickly, mm -hmm. whether it be something that I've purchased as an online course mm -hmm. or a podcast that I listen to on the way to wherever I'm going, I, I want to make that a part of my morning ritual. Right. Of course, coffee is always a part of that <laughs> as well. <laughs> right, but, breakfast. Yeah, you know. all of that. You know, but you want your morning ritual to, to sound and look something like what Joy said. And then you also want to start a ritual for your work day. Right. How, how do you get yourself into the work? What are some exactly. of the things you want to do uh, to get yourself started? And then a shutdown ritual yeah, as well. Of what are the things that you're doing to complete the work and say okay this is my natural stop right I think here. that's really important and like for me I spend one hour checking mm -hmm. emails from the previous day mm -hmm. and then I get into client work because you can you can get on that computer and get lost and then it's noon right and you've exactly. lost half your day already so I think it's really important to schedule every hour I mean essentially yeah. you have to schedule er every hour of your day it helps you have a visual on what it is you need to get done right and including that white space that you yes. talked about so if it's having lunch with a friend mm -hmm. or even just going silent for 15 right. minutes right you have to have some white space social media exactly. you know because we mm -hmm. can get lost in social media too right you mm -hmm. know you're on the on 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 the internet browsing for hours and you lose track of time so I think it's important to schedule that time and sometimes I'm bad about that. I don't really schedule the social media yeah. time, but mm -hmm. you know. And I yeah, because it's, it's easy to get sucked into social yes. media. But you also want to have an evening ritual as Absolutely. well. So yes. what are you doing before you get ready to go to bed? Mine I mean, includes wine. Yes. So <laughs> a wine down every night. Wine down. <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah. So you want to whatever that is for you. Yeah. It could be watching 30 minutes of TV or favorite yes. show or whatever it is before you get ready to go to bed. But you need to have an evening Absolutely. ritual too. Absolutely. And then, the, finally, before we get ready to check out for this next segment, I want to share with you all that it's important to have a big three. Mm -hmm. A lot of us have this long to-do list. Yes. And some of those to-dos have nothing to do <laughs> with the goals that you're trying to accomplish Absolutely. for this quarter. Right. So you want to have a big three. So what are the three top things that mm -hmm. I have to accomplish today in order for me to feel like I've added value to my day, I've yes. added value to my clients, I've added value to my business, mm -hmm. all of that. So three different, three big things for each day, mm -hmm. and then your to-do list or your other tasks come below that. Right. You know, anything else that you might have to accomplish like for that. the day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
So I think I've given a broad overview yes. of this. They're yes, like, that's a great planner. Yeah, that's so it's actually planner. more stuff in here. So like I said, check it out, fullfocusplanner.com. Uh, we're going to be right back, but when we come back, we're going to yes. have a special guest. Yes, John Niklo. Yes, so stay tuned. He's going to help us get our goal-getting life in order. We'll be right back. We stock a huge selection of carpet. You can buy it today, and you can get it today. With over 20 years experience, we do it all. Carpet, laminates, tiles, and hardwoods. We carry popular name brands. We have the largest selection at unbeatable prices. We specialize in residential apartment and commercial installs. Plus, when you get it today, you can have it installed tomorrow. Get the best floors for less and get it today. Hill Pro Floors on Greenbrier in Stafford. Are you a public speaker interested in connecting with a larger audience? Then it's time you considered joining the Synergy Network. Connect to a community of millions. Produce professional content. Develop your own channel. Rapidly increase your followers. Reach a global audience. When you join the Synergy Network, you're in great company. International celebrities and thought leaders connect with our audiences on a weekly basis. Interested in doing a live show? Synergy Studios offers a 3,500 square foot facility that allows you to do your show before a live studio audience. Ready to take your brand to the next level? Then join the Synergy Network. Connect with the Synergy Network at sales at synergynetwork.com or give us a call at 281-892-2023. And we are back. Welcome back to the Business Breakfast Talk Show. We are in studio with our special guest, Mr. John Niklos. CEO of Lead360. He's going to help us get our business goals on track. So, John, I'm not going to give you this full, broad introduction. We want you to introduce yourself. Tell us who sure. you are, where you come from, and get get introduced. Absolutely. <laughs> so, uh, I am from Houston, Texas, born and bred. Yes. Um, I've lived all over Houston. Uh, my background in business is incredibly expansive. I've worked in almost... Every industry you can think of, I built satellites and rockets for Boeing, <laughs> liquefied wow. natural gas plants with okay. Bechtel, um, sold handbags with Coach, body fragrance with Bath and Body Works, <laughs> suits with <laughs> Neiman Marcus, you name it, I've done it. And so um, I built this company around all of these wonderful um, tangible skills yeah. uh, and transferable skills, mm -hmm. right? And so um, I was telling somebody the other day, over the course of my career in corporate America, I've generated over $100 million for companies. And so now my goal is to be able to do that with uh, small businesses um, and mid to large size <laughs> organizations. So in essence, um, to sum up what I do is I take the chicken shack and turn it into Chick-fil-A. Ooh, right. Um, like so if you're that. an entrepreneur, you have an idea, we manifest that, we turn it into something profitable, right? Uh, we turn it into a dollar because um, I don't want you to just have a business and you're not making money from it, right? Okay. So um, money is definitely part of the motivation always okay. and always. So 
I love that. Money is a part of the motivation. <laughs> always a part of the motivation. So and always. I, I want to start out by talking about some facts. Now, there is one fact that always rings true to me, especially as we transition into this new year. One of the facts is that 92% of people are unsuccessful at reaching their goals each year. So why are people unsuccessful? What, what do you think that's all about? McGee, two words, clearer, sooner. Hmm. That's it, right? Yeah. Um, so all of the things we talk about when creating goals, <laughs> right? So the, the the whole concept of smart goals, smarter goals, um, of uh, holding yourself accountable to goals and creating a team around them and all those things, that's wonderful. However, if you're not clear about where you're going, mm -hmm. none of this stuff matters, right? right. Um, you can't have relevancy without being clear. You can't have um, excitement around it without being clear, right? right. And so – Everything that I do with everyone is always going to start with your why, right? right? Mm -hmm. Like, what's your why in general? What's your why for your business? And what's your why this year, right? Right? Um, does that make sense? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And so, like, that's that's the biggest piece. If we can start with why, we under we uncover our why. I call it. It's almost like a a star. Mm -hmm. It's the thing when you set the goal and you miss a step or you spend too much time on social media and you were supposed to get this done and now you got to stay up a little later to make sure that you get it done, right. you make sure you get it done exactly. because it's that thing that is always nagging at you. It's always saying, hey, I got to get it done. I got to get it done, right? Like I cannot forego not achieving this vision. Um, and because of that, I am willing to do the work. I'm willing to stay the extra hour. I'm willing to commit um, the extra focus and all of those types of things. So I think if we can get really clear on why it is we're doing something um, and why it is we want something, uh, the easier it is it is for us to set goals um, and the easier it will be for us to achieve them and stay committed to achieving them. Right. Yeah, so I love what you said about your why. We talked about that a little bit earlier. Another fact is that 33% of people who are going after their goals they don't even make it past the first month hmm. when they're working towards their goals. So how does this sobering fact affect new and budding entrepreneurs? Oh, man. Ooh. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I'm going to give you a, a, a really, like some really quick uh, little points. Um, last year, I'd say probably 25% of the entrepreneurs that I spoke with and did consultations, I do free consultations, plug um, uh, that I spoke with had these great ideas, mm -hmm. things they wanted to do. And so I started sharing with them about, okay, so you want to set it up like this, you may want to consider this type of business model, all of those things, right? Mm -hmm. um, but because they weren't um, clear enough on their why, mm -hmm. um, because they weren't attached enough to the, to the dream or to the business um, or any of those things, they don't really get out of the gates, right? right? So the gun fires off they get out the blocks and take like one or two strides and then they realize, oh shoot, I'm in an arena. Mm -hmm. I got all of these people looking at me. I got mm -hmm. all, like I'm really running this race. Right. I'm, I'm scared. They freeze up mm -hmm. because they've frozen up. None of the other things that they have written down matters. Mm -hmm. Like they go out the window. It's kind of like going to a self-defense class, right? And you're like, oh, I got it. So you're going to swing this way. I'm going to turn this way. If you grab me, I'm going to move like this, right? And then somebody says, boo, and you freeze, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Um, but because you haven't done it enough, right. um, you don't know how to jump back into it. Right. And I think that, that that number is really indicative of the fear of failure that people yeah, have, absolutely. right? Like, I'm a big fan of failing, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I want to fail big. Like, I don't want to do, like, little small failures. Like, <laughs> I don't want one flat tire. Give me all four. <laughs> right? Like, if I'm a fail, like, I want it to yeah, be a big right. failure mm -hmm. because those are big lessons mm -hmm. which drive big success, absolutely. you know? Yeah. I think also, too, to your point, some people are just not prepared. They mm -hmm. have no idea what they're getting themselves into. They think it looks glamorous to be mm -hmm. an entrepreneur, and they do not have a plan. And so, I mean, we've talked about this. It, it has to be something you, that whatever you're getting into, one, it has to be something that you actually like to do. Absolutely. And so, you know, because I find the same thing. Don't call me unless you're ready yeah. because – you may think you're ready at that moment, and then when we get on the phone and we're talking about real stuff, like how to move forward, then you realize, oh, you know what? 
I'll get back to you. Right. Because so, you're not ready. You're not going to get back to you. So I like ready. to challenge that a little bit. And not even challenge, but I like to, <laughs> to shift the perspective because I was the yeah. exact same guy, mm-hmm. right? And then I realized, even for myself, you can never be ready for something you've never experienced, True. right? So no matter how much preparation that you've done, you won't be ready for something that's new, right? Absolutely. Which is why we go to um, uh, consultants and say, mm-hmm. hey, look, so this is kind of what I'm thinking. This is kind of right. what I'm feeling. Can you point me in the right direction? Mm-hmm. Um, my new mantra now is um, don't contact me unless you're willing, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Because I'm not worried about your unreadiness. That's right. why you came to me. We can get right. you ready. What I need you to do is be willing to spend three right. months researching. That's the ready. You're <laughs> You you got to be ready to spend the money. Spend the money. (laughs) Yes. Be invested. Yes. Absolutely. (laughs) Yes. Uh, I believe that because... You, they have to do work too. Yeah, you know? yeah, absolutely. So I totally believe. I will that absolutely hold willing. your hand if you want. That right. price point is significantly higher. <laughs> exactly. Right. Um, yeah. Now, exactly. if you'd like for me to just shoot you a couple of little tips, right. you do this, this, this. Yeah. You take that. You come bring it back to me. I take over your work exactly. like you're a kid. You know, and and I'm mom or dad, and you know yes. we looking over your work. Right. We can do that and send you on about your way. Absolutely. But now, if you want me to teach, yeah. Then you got to be ready exactly. to make that ready investment. to make that commitment too. Absolutely. You know, mm-hmm. the commitment financially and the commitment as, as absolutely because it's an right. investment in your business. Mm-hmm. And and so um, I was I teach a class called the Idea Startup. Another plug. Um, <laughs> that uh, one of the things I talk to uh, the business owners and the um, aspiring entrepreneurs that are there. So you know, um, when you ever watch Shark Tank, there's always three questions that are asked: Why? Mm-hmm. What made you want to start doing this? People always want to know what your personal investment in this is, right? right. The second is um, how much money you've put up, right? Mm-hmm. Because if you haven't put money into your business, I'm not putting money into your right. business, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and people can talk a good game, but it's when they put the dollars up that you know they're serious, right? Mm-hmm. And then the third exactly. is how much money have you made? Why? Because that tells me if people drink the Kool-Aid that you made, mm-hmm. right? And so, <laughs> like... Th- those are the things. So as, yeah. you know, we're talking and these things are coming out as it relates to goals, you know, and all of those things. Like one of the things that's always important is setting a dollar amount with the date, mm-hmm. right? So you can set every goal. You can make them all, you know, achievable and timely and all of those things. But at the end of the day, if they're not connected to some type of revenue mm-hmm. goal, then how is that doing anything for your business? Because right. we know, like, business is like Monopoly. The game is over when you run out of money. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's, That's life, too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> game over. <laughs> you better well, figure it out. Yeah. You don't get the pass, go. Right. Collect no $200. <laughs> well, we'll be back in just a moment, and we're going to continue sharing this awesomeness with uh, Lee360 and John Niclo. So we'll be right back. Make sure you invite a friend to tune in. Are you a public speaker interested in connecting with a larger audience? Then it's time you considered joining the Synergy Network. Connect to a community of millions. Produce professional content. Develop your own channel. Rapidly increase your followers. Reach a global audience. When you join the Synergy Network, you're in great company. International celebrities and thought leaders connect with our audiences on a weekly basis. Interested in doing a live show? Synergy Studios offers a 3,500 square foot facility that allows you to do your show before a live studio audience. Ready to take your brand to the next level? Then join the Synergy Network. Connect with the Synergy Network at sales at synergynetwork.com or give us a call at 281-892-2023. The power of a testimony can change the lives of someone you may never meet. It's time to give a voice to that story. This is Alyssa R. Jones, the host of the new show, The Survivor's Voice. Each week, you will hear stories of triumph and empowerment.
All right, and we are back. Thank you for joining us for the Business Breakfast Talk Show. We are speaking with John Nicholas, and we're talking about goal setting. Yes. So if you have any questions about that, please give us a call here in the studio at 832-230-5592. Or you can ask your questions online, and I see some of you all have already started to ask those questions. So, Joy, we have somebody. Yes, someone asked, um, how do we set up a meeting? Yes, so um, if you are interested in setting up a meeting, you can absolutely um, shoot me an email. You can go to, uh, you can shoot an email to John, J O H N, at the 360way.com. That's T H E 360 W A Y dot com. Or you can go to meet, M E E T, 360, 360 dot scheduling dot com. And that's A C U I T Y scheduling.com. Um, I'll be sure to uh, post a link to uh, my scheduler on my website, www.the360way.com, um, and we can chat. So, looking forward to doing that. Yeah. Right. Hey, Thank like you. I told you, I do free 15-minute consultation. So, <laughs> y'all call in. Let's talk. Let's talk. So, speaking of let's talk, let's talk a little bit about your success pyramid. You created something that you've actually created specifically for our viewers and entrepreneurs that are listening in. So when you go to the 360way.com, this resource is actually online for you. So all they have to do is scroll down, right? Yep, uh, scroll down to the yeah. bottom of the page and click on um, the Insider Guide. It's a business insight guide um, that is available for you all just for the show. It's all of my wonderful um, uh, tools and templates that we used in the idea startup. So you get those for free because... I love Tiffany and Joy <laughs> so much that I was like, hey, you know, here's my one free thing that I'm doing for the year. <laughs> no. That's it. That's it. That's awesome. Well, yes. thank you so much for doing that for our listeners and our viewers. So go ahead and dive right into that. Tell us what the success pyramid is all sure, about. Sure, absolutely. So um, what I found, um, I'm a planner, like, guy, right? Planners, journals, like, I love them all, right? And so I'm always buying a new one. And all of those things. And I've done the Franklin Covey to the Moleskin to the Life mm -hmm. Planner, like all of these types of things. And so um, what I've learned is while they're great, sometimes they can be a little overwhelming. Mm -hmm. And for me, I need to manage my business. Um, I can manage my personal life one way, um, but I need to manage my business and I want to be focused on my business. Um, and sometimes it gets a little difficult trying to drop everything into one space. Mm -hmm. And so uh, what I've done uh, is created this um, template, and you'll see it on the Insider's Guide. It's called the Success Pyramid. And so um, the whole point of it is to make things really simple, right? The goal is to make goal setting really, really simple and achievement simple. So here's what we do. We start with a targeted result. It's a really high-level end goal, right? So that's whether that's an experiment, a pilot, a prototype, um, something like that, a big launch, whatever that might be. Um, from there, we're going to create progress milestones. Each one of these milestones are set such that as I reach these milestones, I get closer to achieving this targeted result, right? So consider it like playing a video game. Every time you get so far on a stage, you hit a checkpoint. So if you lose or you die or something like that, you come back to that checkpoint, mm -hmm. right? If you meet all of those checkpoints, you eventually get to the end of the stage, right? Now, so how do we get to each one of these checkpoints? We set up goals. So each one of our goals are linked to one of these milestones. So it's such that as we achieve goals, we get closer to a milestone. As we reach milestones, we get closer to the targeted result. Mm -hmm. Lastly, what am I going to do today, right? Those are my daily actions, my tasks. Right. So if I if I do these tasks, I will reach this goal. If I reach this set of goals, I'll if I achieve this set of goals, I reach this progress milestone. If I reach all of these progress milestones, I hit my targeted result. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I'll give you a really quick rundown of what that looks like. Right. So a targeted result might be I want to hit five hundred thousand dollars with my product launch May 2nd. Right. Um, a pro one of those progress milestones might be. I will have 2,500 qualified buyers at my product launch, right? Mm -hmm. Now, how can I get that? What, what's one goal that I might set for those progress milestones? Mm -hmm. Well, I'm going to send 50 prospecting emails per day, right? Now, when it comes down to the actual task that I need to do, all I have to do is go pull up a list, type up an email, and hit send, right? Mm -hmm. I don't have to think about every day I got to get $500,000, 
right? Yeah. So we talk about the 33% that don't get past the first month right. or the 92 who right. um, aren't successful in achieving the goals. Right. A lot of times it's overwhelming. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, they're not prepared. They don't have the plan, but it can be overwhelming if every day you wake up, man, I got to pay rent. Man, I got to pay this. Right. Man, I got employees to pay. No, the only thing I want you to be thinking about is what do I need to do today? Right. If I can get what I need to do today done, then what, what needs to happen and what I want to see happen at the end of the year will happen. Right. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I love that. Like that. Yeah. I hope you all were listening. And if not, we have the replay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we want you to share the replay out. Oh, and if you haven't shared this out, this is such great information. Yes. We want you to share this out with your audience. So go ahead and click the share button so we can make sure that we reach as many people as possible. So, John, now you've said a mouthful, so I'm sure people are going to go back and listen to this again. Yes. But I also want to talk a little bit about what entrepreneurs should be doing less of in 2018. What oh. are some of the things that mm. we need to just completely eliminate, cut out, stop it? Right. Okay, so <laughs> if you are, right uh, on, yeah. if you're working for someone, if you're a, a workpreneur, mm -hmm. right, mm -hmm. um, and you have a full-time job, uh, what you're going to need to do if you want to be an entrepreneur and you want to be one that eventually works for themselves, yes. right, is you need to stop working overtime for free, mm -hmm. right? So have that conversation with your supervisors, with your teams. Let them know, hey, look, I'm going to hold myself accountable as well as you accountable to getting done what we need to get done and improving our efficiency and our effectiveness. Mm -hmm. Why? Because you cannot build a business working four hours a week on it, right? right? right. Like, it's not going to happen. Um, the next thing that you want to do is stop measuring your level of success with everyone else's, mm -hmm. right? Um, mm -hmm. To be very honest, right, like you go to school for 12 years, then you go to school for another four to get an entry-level position, um, getting paid 40 to maybe 60, 70 if you're an entrepreneur, if you're an electrical engineer or something like that. But now we're talking about, what, 16 years of school, yeah. right, to get a check. Right. And then we jump out in the entrepreneurship world and we think that we're going to generate $100,000 yeah. in the first two months. Mm. Not happening, right? right? Like, <laughs> I really <laughs> want that, but it's not, right? Yeah, um, so I'd say definitely that. Like, don't use anyone else's measuring stick yeah. but your own, right? Mm -hmm. um, the third, I'd say definitely, as I stated before in the previous segment, a date and a dollar amount. You want to know if somebody's serious about business? Ask him. A date and a dollar amount. Have you given yourself a date? Have you given yourself a dollar amount, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, and then the last two things that I'll share with you is you need an exit strategy, right? Um, uh, seven habits of highly effective people. I believe number one is begin with the end in mind, right? right. So do you want to sell this off? Do you want to pass this on to your kids? Um, what, like, what do you want to do with this business? Why are we setting it up? But more so, um, how are we ending it? How do we know when we're done with this, right? Or do we you know, get done with it. And then the last thing I would say is really identifying the neglected need, right? So I understand you may have a certain skill set or you may have something that you're passionate about, right? If that does not directly translate into a need for someone else, mm -hmm. nobody's going to consume your product, Absolutely. right? Your friends and family are not supporting your business. They're supporting you, right? right? So mm -hmm. after they've supported you, the money dries up, right? right. Um, and I was listening, I'll say this last thing, I was listening to um, Masters of Scale, which is a podcast that's hosted by um, one of the founders of LinkedIn. And um, they had a show on, and one of the things the guy said was um, scalable businesses don't necessarily meet a, a drama dramatic or drastic need. They meet a neglected need, mm -hmm. right? So it's not about this real big thing that you're right. trying to – it's just this little thing that nobody ever thinks about, Absolutely. right? Like, so think about all of those things, right? Google and them – uh, owning, for the most part, all the information, right? All of this right. data mining, right? Like, that that space wasn't there before. Mm -hmm. YouTube, that space wasn't there before. Facebook, that space wasn't there before. Timex, when they came up with a whole new price point for watches, created a whole new market, right? It wasn't there. It's a need that was neglected. Mm -hmm. And so as you grow into this year, right, really look at what you're offering and how you are building a value proposition based around a neglected need. Because if... You are just going in trying to do what somebody else is doing better unless you have the resources and the capacity to do it better. And for the most part, cheaper, you're not going to win. Right. Yeah. Yeah. At least it won't be sustainable. You won't stay in the sky very long. Right. Mm -hmm. You have to identify a niche. Make yeah, yourself your stand niche. out exactly. from your mm -hmm. competition. So for our listeners, how would they start going about figuring out what that neglected need is like what what needs to happen in order for them to start to say okay I have a place where I fit 
Right. Um, look at your daily life. Mm. Like, your daily life. Um, I will tell you, at the end of this year, we will have our own strategic planner, right? It's going to be super thin, um, and it's going to be very targeted and pointed coming from Lead360. Why? Because I've used so many different planners, and I love them. Just for my business, it's really difficult to use because I'm overlaying my personal life. And right. so when my personal life expands and my business starts to expand, I run out of paper, mm-hmm. right? right. Um, and so it's looking at my personal life, what struggles have I dealt with, mm-hmm. and how can I make those mm-hmm. things better, right? Talk to your friends. Ask them about the things that they struggle with, right? Like the whole concept of Uber came about because a guy had a limo company and didn't have enough drivers, mm-hmm. right? You know, like mm-hmm. it's those simple things, right? So how do we... Um, look at our current surroundings and find needs because those are going to be the things that you know the most about and you have access to information um, readily. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I hope everybody is listening to you because this is great information. (laughs) Thank you, thank (laughs) you, thank you. Here on this Saturday morning. I have one final question. (laughs) Sure. So how does setting clear goals give you influence? Because... That's ultimately what most of us want in our businesses because our businesses have to have some type of influence in order to make money. Yes. So how does setting clear goals give you influence? I agree. I will first say that influence is, you're absolutely spot on with that. Um, the only thing better than having a million dollars is being able to influence a million. Mm-hmm. Right? I don't have to work for it. I can just right. make it move. Right? right? Mm-hmm. Um, having clear goals um, creates influence because every time you move into a space, you're always going to be very clear about where it is that you are, where it is that you want to go. So the questions you ask will be intentional. The movement that you make will be intentional. The decisions you make will be intentional. Mm -hmm. Everything will be intentional, right? Um, And for people that move in an intentional way, you already stand out above the crowd. There's a level of fear and uncertainty that you don't have confidence, right? Right. And we're all attracted to confidence, right? Mm -hmm. Um, I'd say the next thing that um, uh, the type of influence that you get from being able to goal set is the clearer you get about your business, the easier it is for you to communicate that mm-hmm. to people. And in a space now where technology is driving a lot of instant gratification and this needs to happen now and I don't have time to think about this and I don't have um, time to listen to you think through all of this in your head and then tell me verbally, mm-hmm. right? When the clearer that you are with your goals, um, the... the uh, more consistent you are with sticking to them and achieving them, right? I call it completing the commitment, right? right? The, the clearer you are and the more consistent you are in doing those things. When I go share with you, then I say, hey, look, so I need X, Y, and Z, or I'm looking to do X, Y, and Z, right? It makes it so much more clear. It's pristine. Like, you, you understand exactly what it is I'm saying, and because of that, it's easier for you to buy into it, mm-hmm. right? Like, you don't have to think through it and say, hey, can you tell me that again? I'm really trying to I'm, I'm trying to follow you. I'm trying to understand what you're saying, but I don't really kind of get it, right. mm-hmm. you know? So the more you talk about these things, the clearer you are, the clearer you are, the easier it is for you to communicate um, what you are able to offer right. and what it is that you need, um, and then how you can show up for other people because giving is an easy way to get influence, yeah. right? Yeah, Go absolutely. in asking, what can I do for you? Yeah. Right, uh-huh. <laughs> exactly. What problem can we solve? Exactly. Well, we have solved a lot of problems today. We have the Business (laughs) Breakfast Talk Show. Yes. So So excited. One more time, where can people find you before we get ready to sign off? Sure. So on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, you can find me at The360Way, T-H-E 360-W-A-Y. You can absolutely slide in my DMs. We can talk, right? (laughs) Um, Business. Uh, And then you can email me at john at the360way.com, J-O-H-N at T-H-E, I'm sorry, uh, yeah, uh, T-H-E 360-W-A-Y.com. You can always um, check out our uh, website at www.the360way.com. All right, so we have enjoyed you today. Thank you so much for being on our show. All of our viewers and listeners, thank you so much for joining us this morning. We've had an absolutely wonderful time. And until next time, breakfast is served.